So, um, I was wondering, actually, I'm curious. What happened to uh, Bren, Brian Callen going to Austin, Texas and having a tour of the Comedy Mothership? Did that happen? Were any of you guys, because I, I didn't remember to check Rogan's account when it was happening, but I didn't hear or didn't see any footage of Joe and Brian hanging out. No Instagram stories, no clips or stuff have gone viral or been posted on the subreddit. So I'm assuming they didn't meet up. So Brian Callan went to Austin to do that Minds um, talk conversation thing with Alex Jones and, and Destiny and a few other people from that kind of culture war type of place. And then um, he was meant to get a tour of the comedy mothership with Rogan and hang out there. And he didn't get a tour at all. And I remember it, he said he was going to do that because he said it in the Fire and the Kid episode, episode number 885. He said it right here. He said he's going to hang out with Rogan. Uh, anyway, you're heading to Austin, buddy? Heading to Austin. I'll see Mr. Rogan there. He's going to take me on a little tour of the mothership. Oh. You're not performing, though? Maybe I Maybe will. Maybe jump on. I don't know. That'd be good. I'll have to talk to Adam Egan about it. Maybe I will. But the end <laughs> <laughs> he already got palmed up to Adam Egan. He already got palmed off to Adam Eager. So he was getting invited to go to the comedy mothership, but not to do stand-up. This, this honestly did feel a lot like that story that Luis J. Gomez said, where he thought maybe him and Rogan fell out. He said, Luis J. Gomez, I think, said, when Legion of Skanks went on Rogan, I think the second time, Rogan showed him around his compound where the studio is and showed him all his toys, showed him his bow and arrow, his pool table, all these cool stuff, but he never let them play with it. He just showed them it and they said, yeah, let's go record. Like some weirdo, like why can't we play with it? Also, he just lets him. Sh he just points to the stuff that he likes, and then he says, "Yeah, okay, leave now." So Rogan's maybe that kind of guy. Okay, come see my comedy club, but don't ask me about performing. If you want to ask somebody, ask Adam Eager. How do I get in touch with Adam Eager? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, bye. <laughs> oh, Adam Eager must be so pissed. His phone must be on fire. Adam Egot's phone must be on fucking fire. He must be getting DMs and texts and emails and phone calls from all number of people. And he knows probably, he knows. They probably got a code. Him and Joe Rogan probably got a little code. If anybody calls you about the comedy mothership, just say no. Because if you have to call him, it probably means you, you, you shouldn't be coming on. Because most likely... Adam Eager and Joe Rogan are handpicking people who they want to perform there. So if you're not getting handpicked, it most probably means it's a no. You know, it's a it's a clever way of doing it, but God damn it, man. God damn it. The Adam Eager thing is hilarious. It really, really fucking is. But a part of me, maybe I shouldn't be feeling this because these guys are, you know, they're not the greatest human beings in the world. But a part of me does feel a little bit sorry for them. Is that fair to, fair to say? I feel some sympathy for Brian Callen and Brendan Shaw. They spent a large chunk of their careers and their lives sucking off Rogan. That's, that's my sucking sound, right? Going crazy over Rogan, backing him up, laughing at all his jokes, waxing lyrical about him on all their podcasts. Then the moment he opens up a comedy club, you would think there would be a shoo-in to perform there. He says no. So what's all that friendship for? What was all that flipping hanging out for? What was all that the comedy store's never been better? We are murderers. The crew. All this sort of stuff, right? The Jerry Extended Universe. I feel a little bit sad, a little bit bad for them. Of course it's only them they've only got themselves to blame, right? Brian probably shouldn't be raping people, allegedly. Brendan probably shouldn't be just Brendan allegedly right he probably needs a handler all that sort of stuff they probably did it all to themselves but a part of me feels a little bit bad for them they spent all that time cock munching and essentially it didn't really count for shit when rogan opened up his own club he good douched them they did not matter they do not matter kind of kind of kind of sad to, to see in real time to be fair i'm not gonna lie a little bit sad to see but hey They've only got themselves to blame. They've only got themselves to blame. Next on the list here, right? Next on the list here. Let's move on there. Let's move on. 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 So this is a clip taken from the Final Kids subreddit. It features Jay Larson from the recent episode of the flipping T-Fat K. 
And um, who's this person by? Playful Wolverine 95. So big up you for clipping this. This is a pretty interesting clip because it says, Jay Larson says he's not a fan of dog owners, right? It's probably a bit that he's doing for his comedy. So it makes sense, right? Try out your bits on podcasts. Like, you know, you know, back, you know, back in the day, how that used to be when comedians would get on podcasts and try bits out and fuck around and not get political or not try and talk about culture war nonsense or cancel culture shit and just have fun and shoot the shit. Remember that time? That was a fun time, wasn't it? I kind of missed that time. But anyway, Jay Larson's on there. He says something about not liking dogs and Brendan kind of, you know, wimpily kind of co-signs it, which is really, really hilarious. Let's just play this quickly now. I think a lot of times it's like people need to get comfortable with that. Just like kids need to get comfortable with losing. They also need to get comfortable with the idea of things that aren't just going to be the best. That's why I can't stand dog owners nowadays. Remember when you were a kid, dogs weren't even allowed on a couch. Now people bring them everywhere. They sleep with them. It's like, hey, you don't need to to get love from an animal 24 yeah. hours a day. My right. sister's dog, if you weren't holding it, it'd be like, hum, hum. I'm That's like, what did good. you do to this poor animal? Yeah. yeah. You got it believing that it needs to get held yeah. 24. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That's very. So in my opinion, this is a small example. It's going to be the best. That's why a small example. This is why I don't think Brendan could ever do the right wing grit thing that Brian Callen's doing. It's a thing that all canceled comedians do. When they get cancelled, they immediately lean to the right because that's usually the place where people aren't really that bothered about quote unquote counter culture and will kind of platform you and whatever it may be. You know, however you see that is what you see that. But I think a lot of these guys aren't brave enough to actually come out and say stuff that may alienate a part of their flipping audience. They don't want to do that. They don't want to alienate the audience at all because they need their audience to buy merch, to buy tickets. So deep down, Brendan, especially after the fucking tank debacle, RIP tank, he probably does want to say, fuck dogs, right? They're only there for security. I don't give a fuck about them. You know, I only get new ones, new breeds, rescues are for poor people. He wants to say this stuff with his chest, but he's too scared to actually say it with his chest and probably doesn't have the intellect to to have a point of view behind either to stand behind. Because that's what those right wing grifters do. They have ridiculous hot takes, but it's kind of based in some some rationale, some kind of full out kind of view of the world, whatever it may be. But you can't just stand on it so you can kind of argue back. And I think these guys, the issue that they have in general is that they don't really stand for anything, right? Like, I agree. Okay, cool. You agree. Why don't you say it yourself then? <laughs> Why are you waiting for this guy to come on your show to kind of frame this really interesting take on dogs and pets and stuff? Or not interesting, but a funny one. And then you just say you agree. Why don't you have a take? What's your take? Tell us, please. Instead of just sitting on fucking fences. And also, can can we have a ban on people crossing their legs on podcasts? I know maybe sitting down man spreading is one thing, but this fucking metropolitan fucking crossing of the legs thing is annoying it doesn't make you look smart it doesn't make you look cultured it doesn't make you look cool it's just annoying really i'd rather you sit on the floor <laughs> i swear to god or stand up <laughs> i just hate the crossing low legs thing it just annoys me so fucking much it's a little thing it doesn't mean anything really but it fucking annoys me everyone's fucking crossing their legs everybody like what next you're gonna start smoking a cigarette huh like, come on, enough, enough. But hey, what do I know, innit? What do I know? Maybe I'm just being a hater. Maybe I'm just being a hater.